The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. This is the Tuesday edition, Tuesday, uh, February the 5th. And I follow two hours, two great hours with uh, Steve Rhodes. And straight after me comes uh, Victor Jones. And, of course, Victor Jones' Options Hour. That's a great show. It comes in just once a week on a Tuesday at uh, 12 o'clock. Then following him comes uh, Daryl Martin. Dave White, evidently that was a fabulous workshop on Saturday with Daryl and Tom. Great, great. Con kudos to both of you. Dave White comes in at uh, 2 o'clock. Ken Shreve at 3 to 4. Tom O'Brien wraps up at 4 to 6. Fabulous shows right here at TFN. Let's go through the market right this moment. Dow's up 115. This time yesterday we were down 135 or so at about um, at about 11 o'clock yesterday morning. So we've we've got most of that back. Not all of it. This is just uh, fantastic. I drawn that oval in. We were actually short the Dow um, covered it this morning for a, a one point I think 60 or 1.80 loss. The reason I want to do that is just a normal thing for us when we get to a peak D and the technicals are starting to fail to actually start a position on the short side just as it's almost insurance but that's where you can expect doesn't have to happen some kind of a pullback fortunately our long positions are more than making up for the uh, 1.8 uh, loss there so um Let's go through the numbers and I will explain what I'm looking at here and what, what is so important about a session like this where you there's a chance that you're getting three. This You can go back and look at as many charts of the indexes as you want. It is very seldom that you get, I call this the sandwich. You see that green bar there, the Dow, where it went to 14, uh, 14,019.78 on the, on the 1st of Feb? You see the inside candle? Uh, let me double check. 13,860.58. Yeah, the inside candle of yesterday, higher, high, higher, low, and high, lower high. And then today, another inside candle so far. If by the end of the day there's a breakout above yesterday's high of 14,009.79, that represents a very unique uh, um, candle uh, pattern. And. Um, We'll see what it, what happens today, but if if that occurs, it doesn't happen very often. Sometimes it can happen at the bottom. It usually doesn't happen at the top unless it is part of this process, this oval process, where it says it's going to go higher and it's going to come back. It's almost the same technique that I use for the Chapman Wave Stork Lake Formation. Remember, this is the one right here. Wait, let me just grab it and show you. That stalk leg, you got the body. Now, there was a chance that we had made that uh, neck by going to peak D, but uh uh, I think we're still going to make the neck, then the head, and then the beak. And that is portending a move slightly higher towards testing the 14,198, I think it was, a previous uh, um, all time high. All time high. Yes, and sorry, the numbers. I'm just going through the numbers here, and that's going to say, okay, be careful. So what we're what we're in right now is if I can just grab this chart for one second. We're in that area that I keep talking about, that resistance zone in the S and P. So let's go to the S and P. The S and P is at up thirteen at fifteen oh nine. The comp index is up thirty because Apple is actually participating today. Yesterday it was what down forty nine or something like that, forty five, and today it's up thirty at thirty one sixty one. Gold is down seven point forty at sixteen sixty nine. Silver's up point oh six at thirty one seventy eight. Now platinum's down just a little bit, down twenty five cents at sixteen ninety seven. High grade copper is unch at 3.76 now crude oil is moving higher at 96.69 that's kind of important it's interesting i would like to see crude oil moving higher i'd like to see the crude oil we're going to do a bunch of things here right now we're going to talk about the 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 um bonds are down 20 30 seconds and 148 and 27 30 seconds this is what i want to talk about let me just run them as i do it in order as i i discuss it with my subscribers the volatility index in the daily chart has just made a, a leg D and it could be a peak D. In the tiniest little move, I don't care about percentages in this particular instance. 
It is a huge percentage. When you're going from 12, let me type that in, 12, I think it was 28, wasn't it? 29. 12, 29 was the recent low. 12.29. And yesterday's high of 14.57, 14.75. Wrong way around. 14.75. So, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> let's face it. Uh, 14.75, yeah. Uh, 12.29, that's $2.25 on the 12th. That's a t almost a 20% gain. $2, 20%. Yeah. And, but that's nothing in terms of what we're looking at. The VIX was at 23.23 back in the last day of December. And then all of a sudden, two days before, and then all of a sudden it goes down to 12.29, gets cut in almost half, and then it, it goes up to 14.75. So this is a very important phase. So that's the volatility index. The TLT, because these are all important, these are my three bears, VIXI, Dolly, and Bondi. So we need to look, we just looked at the VIX. Now we're looking at bonds, Bondi. This is the... Uh, this is the Lehman 20-year Treasury T-Bond Fund, uh, which we've been looking at for closely for <laughs> forever, for I don't know how many years, eight years, whatever. Um, and you see that ugly candle of the 1st of February, where it opened at 117.73, went to 117.85, plummeted down to 115.51, did not make a Roman candle. In fact, it closed at the lower, 115.54. Well, we're into, into that, the body of that candle, and the technicals are not yet showing any strength. And the weekly is saying, uh-oh, be careful, that ro inverted Roman candle of last week, if you can't break into the 117.46 area and hold so that you can take out the top of 118.08, this is not so good. So we're going to watch this real closely. So there's Bondi. And now let's look at Dolly, because Dolly was acting qu quite well. Dollar is up uh, 0 0.04. Um, well, I've got 0.10. It's a little bit behind you. But the dollar index making a single leg A up if it starts to break and goes under 79.20. If, in fact, it holds here and starts to move to 79.85, I would say 80 is really the number you're looking at. It needs to get to 80 show, to show that the 80.2200 period exponential moving average can once again become a, a focal point. So let me. So the three bears, the dollar's acting best. It's not great, but it's acting best, but they're really not giving signs of strength, follow-through strength that they had yesterday. And that is really important to me. So looking at the, just real quickly, I've got a couple of questions there. 877 is the number to call. But in the meantime, I've got some den questions that I'm going to go to. I just wanted to explain. You see this nine-period exponential moving average? Now, I have, let me just show you right here. For subscribers to my opening call, my daily service, incredibly uh, uh, detailed report every single day showing all the parameters to use, how I use the, my own techniques, the Chapman Wave methodology techniques. Well, I'm holding on February the 13th, that is February the 13th, a week from tomorrow night. I'm holding a one-hour webinar, and it is for, for only for subscribers. I'm going to go through the different aspects of the of the Chapman wave a little differently to what I can do here in the Tiger in the Tiger Technicians Hour. Why? Because I can spend a lot of time on one particular thing, and I can go through why I'm looking at it and what I'm looking at it. Which are the stocks on my list that I would like to build a core? I love a four or five hundred point decline. There are stocks that I would love to look at as 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 longer term buy and holds. Um, the, the, the area, we, we do have a couple that I love. I want to keep them. But, I mean, not a couple, we have quite a few. But, in fact, I would like very much to be able to get into that area of um, of showing my subscribers in a little bit more detail than I show in my report because it's live and I can show you things as I can go from one thing to the other very quickly and explain. So it's going to be detailed. It's going to show why I look at it, what I do, how we put the positions on, why I put the stops, why I had no choice really. I could have waited another day or two to go to my uh, the short uh, on the Dow. Uh, I should have waited for leg D. I would have got a slightly better price. And we would have taken even a less less than a one percent loss, but I I did it for a couple of reasons because the pullback you saw yesterday was exactly what I didn't want to miss at least getting into that position because it's very important that we do get into those positions where the time is right. So 
Uh, let me go back now to the market. Uh, so anyone who's a subscriber, don't forget, a week from uh, tomorrow, 6.30 to 7.30 uh, Eastern Time, PM, uh, I'll be doing my uh, special webinar on part of my methodology, but part of it, how does it relate? How can you relate my work to what you do? I'll show slides in my um, my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology to, to show you what goes with it. But I wanted to mention something that isn't in the CD, but it is in the, my webinar on moving averages. And that's that nine period moving average. See, that's the maroon, uh, maroon line um, moving average. That Look at that beautiful support. And we did not break it yesterday and the day before and today. We've touched that line and it bounced. We've been... It's like a springboard. It's like a trampoline. And you remember I was talking about, the, you know, for folks, uh, you know, we have one particular position, a Dow stock, that I like very much. And I mentioned the parallel between that Dow stock and the Dow itself, how the Dow fast moving average did not cross negative, how the uh, MACD is still holding very well, how we had made a peak D in both of them, and we needed to see how quickly we can either go to a new leg E or pull back and what levels to, to, to uh, would constitute a breakdown. But look at this in my in my weekly chart. I I have no choice but to call this a leg B. The stochastics at ninety eight percent. MACD's expanding. I, I I like this very much. Now what's important is the up channel in my in my work, I do something called the up track. It's usually in, in channels, but you can do it anyway. It's just a series of two parallel lines. They create their own channel, but it's right at the top of a channel or at the bottom of the channel. At the top of the channel, it's the repellent or uh, cell zone. At the bottom, it's the propellant or buy zone. And what happens is if it breaks above that, what then happens is that you're out of that range. It's very important. You need to be out of the range. I usually say two out of three bars. In this case, they'll have to be two out of three weeks. But so far, this is really nice action with the stochastic up at 98% and the MACD positive. I, I don't know what got into me. I'm not even sure why I even went short when the weekly was so strong. But what I was thinking is that we'd be short, and if the Dow sl slid down to 13,750-ish area, that's where I was expecting that I'd probably turn around and buy the the, the, the Dow or the, the DIA or the uh, DDM, the 200% long. Never worked out that way. Hey, I don't mind. You've got to do what you've got to stick with your discipline. The day is young. Anything can happen. But this, these three candles are really important for the sandwich effect. Now, for some of you say sandwich effect. Even my, even my Master Trader series, people say sandwich effect. I have spoken about it not that often because it doesn't happen that often. But it's really important. So now let's go to this. The question was Panera. Panera Bread which I happen, happened to went there just the other day before we went to a play uh, on Saturday night. He didn't have time to go fancy. We just slipped right across the street to Panera. We had uh, my usual French onion soup there. Um, I like it. And the stock, I have to tell you, with earnings coming out, I'm going to explain a couple of things that I'm looking at right now. I'll be right back at 877 you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Edition. The Dow is up 113. S&P is up 3.16. That's interesting. The Dow is up 0.82. The S&P is up 0.92. I kind of like that differential where the Dow is just slightly behind in the percentage terms. And it's really important at the same time to see what happens between 215 and 225 today. That, I think, is going to be important. If the Dow is then only up 60, S&P is given back, is only up 6, that would fit very well the, the pattern of the oval formation. If it breaks to a new high over 14,019, it's called 14,020, that sets in place a technique that is very similar but it might be in acceleration mode. So let's go, actually, I'm going to go, we're going to talk about Panera in a moment, but first I'm going to talk to Mark in Fort Collins. Hi, Mark, how are you? Uh, Mark, you there? Oh, Mark is yes, going to be yes. listening. There you go. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Hey, we talked a while back about um, Chipotle and seeing if it would make that weekly peak D. Yes. And it, and it did. It and did. My question is, is is it a short, or you, would you wait? The earnings are coming out after the bell. I spent a lot of time on this last night. We've had a lot of success in Chipotle. We've had uh, a couple of very small losses of uh, two, two to maybe five points. But we've also had an 85-point uh, 85, 85 gain and a 22-point gain. So um, overall, my bias was this time with earnings coming out, 
because I didn't understand why it had that big smash to the downside the day we took our 22-point gain on the 16th of January. I thought that was earnings. I don't know why. I that keep was, reading. Uh, um, on January 16th. Um, what was it? 16th. It was the what, the 16th? No, yes. what day was that? It was that was... The- the uh, 16th, yeah, it went down all the way down to 266. Right. Yeah, that was somebody came out and uh, one of the brokerage houses downgraded saying their earnings were going to be poor. And oh, they it, just said that the earnings would be poor, but that wasn't the earnings date. No. Oh, okay, so now we get the earnings date. So That's what happened, folks... It was only a month ago, and the earnings are coming out today. So Right. So this is very interesting because on the 16th, uh, Chipotle, uh, which is trading now at $310.61, up $0.42, cents, slumped. It opened at 267 went all the way down to oh, it went down to 266 and it closed the day before, and we were, in fact, short, but it had closed the day before at 280 And uh, so it recovered very quickly as it went down, and then it closed the day near the highs, and it's just been on a tear ever since, and it went to, I really have no choice but to call this, um, this could be leg G or leg A at the top, the last one. Uh, so I, this is the way I'm looking at it. Everything about it technically on the, in the daily chart, the more I looked at it, the more it says, you know what? They might come out with some lousy earnings, but unless it closes underneath the low of 302.50 made on the 31st, just four days ago, four or five days ago, I want to see it close underneath it. If I get, if I'm convinced that it's closing, if it's a weak close, and tomorrow it's already down four to six points, not thirty or forty, but four to six points, then I'm going to say, okay, let's see. Give it a few minutes, and we'll see what happens. But this is what I'm really looking at: the chart pattern that I'm focusing on now in the weekly chart of CMG, Chipotle Mexican Grill is very similar to the four peaks that have just been made in the Qs, in the QQQ series, uh, trust series. Mm, Let me double check here. So that would be 637. Yes. Now, both of them have held very, very well. The rule of this is that you very quickly, almost within two bars, doesn't matter whether it's a 10-minute chart or a monthly chart, normally within a couple of bars... And this is now the second week since it made that top. We're actually into the third week. Normally, I would see a pullback underneath the nine-period moving average and close sharply lower. So far, the stochastics are 88%, and the MACD is still good in QQQs. And CMG, I want to, I like to, <clears throat> excuse me, I like to match chart patterns with chart patterns. It's a very similar chart pattern coming off the 200 period exponential moving average. This is now the first week since last week. We haven't got a confirmation yet of a peak D because 314.99, <clears throat> take that out by one penny, it extends leg D. So the more I looked at this, I said, you know what? <clears throat> the risk is just too great that if you are wrong, <clears throat> it could open against you a, a really quite a sharp percentage, a, sh- a lot of points, but this time it could actually turn out to be a sharp percentage. So, so you're looking at what to do with the stock, right? Oh, well, I don't have it. I was thinking of maybe buying some puts for the earnings yeah, or just waiting. I understand to- that. And so let me give you my final reasoning on this based on what I'm looking at and whether it's a no trade or whether you could do both. I'll be right back with Mark and Brian straight off this message. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now.
just recently on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF. And over the same two trading days, Market Insight subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Uh, Dallas of 117, S&P's up 30.77. We're on with market forecasts. We're looking at CMG, Chipotle, Mexican growth. Now, one of the things we'd be looking at, because it's kind of stuck here at the strike price of 310, is I, I didn't have a chance last night or even today to look at the options. Uh, you know, this might be a case where you could buy both the, the puts and the calls, um, at the 310 strike price, because if there's a very big move, one of them is going to more than make up for the other. I got a feeling, based on the chart pattern that I'm looking at, um, that it might not be tonight into tomorrow morning. It might be later tomorrow that I'd be putting on a trade. I, I don't... If I had an edge and there wasn't earnings right now, I'd say that this thing's going to go to 315. And it'll go to uh, 315 in the next uh, three to five days. Uh, no, I'm uh, sorry, next two to three days. Um, that's the way I'm looking at it right now. Um, if I'm looking at the weekly chart, it should be pulling back, but the MACD and stochastic are still very strong. So it's going to have to be an earnings disappointment. And my guess is that there have been earnings disappointments before, but we might have used up the downside for the Chipotle, and at this time it's really quite a small pullback, and it only goes to 302, maybe 299, 678 points, 2%, and then it bounces back and it goes into a trading range. 
I just don't, I don't have an edge, and um, the other one that I'll do with you now, because they're both coming out after the bell, both fabulous companies is Panera, Panera Bread, P-N-R-A. I wish I had an edge there. I can just tell you that I'm pretty sure one of them is going to have a really big move uh, within a day or so, um, but Panera's holding very well. My guess from a lot of things that I'm looking at in Panera is that over the next six to eight weeks, Panera is going to be down at the 140s to 130s, and that's just my guess right now, and I suspect that over the same period, four to six weeks, that Panera, having had such a tremendous drop, will try to rally and be stuck in a trading range between uh, 297 ish and 319 to 320. I wish I could give you an edge for today. I don't want you to waste money based on something that I'm just going to guess at. I'm not going to guess I'm just going to step aside and say, you know what, I did a lot of work on this. I thought for a moment I could give you a bias. It's just going to be that earnings report, and it's going to be a hit or a miss, and I don't want to guess either way. So I'm going to step aside and say, you know what, let's look at it after the announcement. Maybe by Thursday, we'll, or Wednesday or Thursday, we'll look at it, maybe Thursday. And at that point, we might get it. Then I will start to get a, either a trend bias to the downside. If 298 breaks on Chipotle, the weekly nine-period moving average support, or if it breaks to the upside, and the same thing with Panera. So I'm sorry to take your time, Mark. I haven't given you any information. But you know what? Sometimes, as we all, all say in the business, no trade is sometimes a trade. And that's the way I feel right now. And Thanks if you have, so much. If you have a minute later, you, will you look at Whole Foods too? I will. Okay, I'll do that. As I'm going to my next quarter, I'm going to go to Whole Foods. Now, Whole Foods is a little bit different, but I'm going to step aside of that. I don't want to give away an edge on, on Whole Foods until I see how it closes this whole week. So I'm going to step aside there. I might do an analysis, but I'm going to go straight to Brian and Jackson. Thanks for calling, Mark. Hi, Brian. How are you? I'm doing great. How about you, man? I'm doing good. Thank you. I'm looking at the uh, what I did was uh, this morning uh, after yesterday's action, I, I took a short position in the uh, DXT, but I did it based on uh, the diamonds on um, 131. If I'm looking at that right, is that an inverted, an inverted hammer? Candle? Okay, give me a second. I'm going to expand this so everyone can see, folks. If you're looking at target conditions, are usually the left chart, the left side chart is the daily, the middle one is the weekly, and the right one is the monthly. So here we go. I'm expanding this. I'm going to open it up. <clears throat> so you're looking at which date? Um, the 31st uh, one, of January. Yeah, it looks like an, an inverted inverted hammer candle and uh, I was basing it on that and what happened yesterday and I just wanted your opinion on on that particular uh, candle pattern and what's happening within it okay well the pat the candle pattern itself I'm just gonna I want to do one thing and then I can expand it so here we go there the oval pa- I don't know if you can see Tiger TV if you've got it on right now but I've shown an oval pattern, the same as I have in the Dow. This particular oval pattern, it's almost as if we've done a mimic of the candle you're talking about. And actually, it is, it's more a candle that I talk about. Let me make this a little narrower so that it's more a candle that I talk about, which is cool. I call the inverted Roman candle, which says that if you get it with a long wick, it, on the upside, it's where it opens at a certain price, makes a nominal new high, drops sharply, and then comes back and closes at about the halfway point. That's with a white candle or green candle if it's on the upside, red candle if on the downside like this one is. And if it does the opposite, it opens, makes a slightly lower low, and then spirals to the upside and then closes about halfway into the entire candle from top to bottom. I call that a Chapman Wave Roman candle. And the premise is that if in the next session, it has to be the next session or within two sessions, if it can quickly go to halfway into the wick, in this case it would be the upside wick going between 138.66 and 139.12, it should be able to break the top. Well, it did exactly that on the uh, 1st of February. And then th- that almost produced the same kind of Roman candle, but it went halfway into it and it gapped down and we pulled back and we got 
a sort of a not quite a doji candle yesterday, but we've got a candle that um, has, in fact, allowed the, the Dow, the diamonds, to pop right to the upside. Folks, we're looking at the Spider Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF. It's trading at 139.65 up a dollar oh eight. <clears throat> well, so you are you went short, and now it's gone against you by uh, about two percent, right? Well, I only initiated the short position this morning. Oh, uh, oh, oh! You did it this morning. On, Good. On, okay. On, on on the DXD, got in about forty one seventy five on it. So um, I'm just not really sure if it closes above that 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 uh, where that level is uh, that, it, that it, on on the one thirty one. Uh, then then probably I should get out. Then right. Okay. This is what I on based on the DXD. I want you to just have a look at it right now. Let me go back to the DIA. This is what I'm going to advise you. Your entry point <clears throat> could have been very close to giving you the best chance that if this candle fails, the Dow Diamonds doesn't close above the 139.89 high of yesterday, that tomorrow's candle becomes a down candle as we form this oval and we and i've been talking about this for over a week now i'm expecting a zigzag oval formation that doesn't break significantly to the upside that would be for the for the significantly would be about 140.38 on the upside for the diamonds and that we trade whoopee up and down like a yo-yo until we use up more time that would be about another two three days and maybe by Friday-ish or Monday-ish, we suddenly spike to the upside and we get to the 140.26 or 140.34 area. We tag close to the Dow 14,198 all-time high. We don't make it, or we do make it, but we get close to it. And then we come right back into the body of this candle. And this whole thing is really an ongoing um, consolidation that's expanding slightly to the upside. In the Dow, it would be about another 180 points, maybe 170 points, 160, something like that. And to the downside, the 13,750s, uh, maybe 13,700s. And until we finish this whole complete week to 10 days of consolidation, it's a high-level consolidation. So let me just define what I'm looking at. If your DXD that you bought at 41, seven, uh, 41, uh, what did you say, 70, 75, yeah, 40, yeah. and now it's at 4170, I would put a stop in at 4157, a penny below the low that was made two days. I think that's reasonable, right? You'd, I think that okay. you'd be comfortable with that, right? Yeah, that and would the, be a, you know... A, Safe bet, you know. Yeah, and then, and then what I'm looking at is that throughout the day, the most of the gains have been made. If at two ten to two twenty to twenty five this afternoon Eastern time, about an hour and a half before the close, <clears throat> the Dow starts to pull back. It's only up ninety. S and P is only up uh, eleven or up ten, and then slowly comes back. And then just before the bell, there's a sudden pop to the upside. But the Dow still only closes. I shouldn't say only, but the Dow closes off that lower level of mid afternoon, but not more than like plus seventy five, mm -hmm. plus eighty two, and the S and P's pull back all the way to about a plus nine. Right. And tomorrow, if we open down. Or even we pop just early and then we come down, that will confirm for me we're in a trading range, a choppy oval trading range. So if the Dow Industrials and the Diamonds spike to a new recovery high, you'll be taken out for a 20 cent loss, I think, a uh, point. Uh, 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 0.5 percent, well, it would be 200 percent, and a quarter of 1 percent would not be bad uh, for the risk of having a chance to see the Dow come right back again to about the 13,920 to 13,870 level, and then maybe chop around again. So I'm not expecting that you get some very big gains, but you asked me about the price risk 
and the price risk would be about 20 cents to the uh, 1350, uh, 41.57 DXD, 200% uh, short, ultra short Dow, 30 pro shares. And that would be, I think, a reasonable, a reasonable stop. So I think you got in really well. But you wouldn't want to handle the trade. And my guess is that by the end of the day, the DXD will be at about 41.87 to 41.94 if the scenario I'm looking at right now is going to unfold. So you're so, not expecting any kind of significant pullback in the next month or two. I mean, I mean, I know you're talking short term about this trade here, but on the Dow, you're not really Well, expecting- my weekly chart, you see, this is the whole thing. That's why I'm saying to you, I, I this as a short, a very short-term trade, and my weekly chart is really powerful. In fact, uh, last week, the high, we, if, if the Dow this week takes out 14,019.78, even by one penny, extends leg B. So I don't see that much of a pullback at this particular point with the stochastic at 98%. Uh, in fact, I, 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 I'm kind of berating myself and saying there was no reason to go for the Dow to, to, to have gone short until uh, there was more evidence because the MACD hasn't crossed negative yet and the stochastics at 87% in the, in the daily. So that's the trade right now. But what I'm going to ask you to do, since you are quite prepared to, I, can, I, know, I know from what, the way you're speaking, you're quite prepared to go long, you're quite prepared to go short. Let's look at it again together, maybe Friday. I think we're going to have a lot more information. If Friday we haven't made a new high, mm-hmm. then we might be looking at uh, the chance that it pulls back into the following week, and then 13,626 will be the nine-period exponential moving average, major support for the uh, Dow. But at this particular point, I'd only call it a short-term trade on the short side. Hope that helps you. you. Thank you so much, Basil. Appreciate Thank it. you very much, Brian. I appreciate you calling. Brian from Jackson, uh, Missouri. And uh, we're going, is that, I think it's Missouri. And we're going to go to Lou in Nashua. Hi, Lou. How are you? Hi, Basil. Um, would you look at uh, crude oil futures? Are you looking at the March? That's the one I look at. That's right, yes. Well, it's trading at 96.77 right now. So uh, do you have a position, or is this a question, just a kind of a timing no, question? No, I just or? want to see where you think it's headed. Okay. If I look at the weekly, the daily chart, it's made a peak E in the Chaplin Wave. It actually had two buy modes. And the last one went to a peak E with a little double top at uh, 98.24. The MACD has turned down. The stochastic's at 79%. The price is not yet following, but I'm looking at the nine period moving average, which is at uh, 96.70. So it's just, we are a tad right now above the nine EMA in the daily chart. But I'll tell you what I'm looking at is my weekly chart is starting to show signs that says there is a very good chance that I've got a left side, right side price time match, and that goes to about the week of the 15th of March to test the previous high of 101.78. So the support is at 94.42, and the weekly, oh, I haven't even put the notation in. Give me a chance to do that here. One second. So this is peak A. Aha, peak B, peak C. If there's no new high this week, it's peak C, um, with a lot of support in the 94, 94s. Um, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to, to put this together with the USO. Um, that's the oil, United States Oil Fund. So if you don't mind holding on, I'm going to do a little work Uh-oh. because to me it's important that the crude oil actually does rise with the euro and the uh, and the stock market together. So I'll be back with Lou and Asher, and we'll be right back straight after this break. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. 
If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, the opening call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, the opening call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar, bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long Long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success and it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. We are back. Dows up on the three S&Ps of 1290, and we are on with Lou in Nashua. And I forgot that Jackson was Mississippi. Brian was in Mississippi. Okay. So, Lou, this is what I'm looking at. If oil, if the oil contract, so the USO matches very well. So the um, if the oil contract takes out the doji candle, the two doji candle lows of 95.43 on the 25th of January and 95.12, then I'd be looking at this and say, uh-oh, now we can pull back to the 93.32, 200-period exponential moving average, or maybe it could be the, I believe that's the 50-period moving average, the 32 period moving average, and that would be around about a 94.34. So far, this is a high level consolidation. This is really very good action. So, the the daily chart says, yeah, we're a little toppy. The weekly chart says, still acting very, very well. MACD is up at 92%. The on balance volume says, be a little careful here. Price is holding well. MACD is good. The monthly chart is in nowhere. Like I can't do anything on the monthly chart. It's right in the middle of everything. I, I, I don't have a signal. So I'm anticipating that the trend line we're looking at says that the next upside target by sometime next week could be 99.48%. 
And if it does that, if it's able to make, if this whole week it doesn't make a new high above 98.24, but it does next week, that would say to me, yes, I think we are going to go towards the 100, 100 to 101.78 area from the 14th of September of last year. If it breaks down, it's going to go underneath 94 and hold under 94. I kind of like what I'm looking at right now. So if you want a market overview, I'm saying that crude oil has held very well after the peak E top, had a lousy day yesterday. Same, not the same candle as the market, but a good candle today. It needs to get to the 97, I'd say 97.25 to 90, 97.65 level by about Thursday without taking out 96.35. So short term pullback, holding quite well. Weekly charges, you might have a week, even a two weeks period without a new high, but I think it's going high and 101 to 102 would be my target going into uh, March, I think I said, uh, yeah, the week of March the 15th. I hope that helps you. Yes, it does. And of course, as there are tensions uh, escalating in uh, the Mideast, then we have a different... Uh yeah, that's that. That is another factor, but I don't know if we really have any. I, I think there's a lot of oil around, so it's just it, that would be more an emotional thing. But we'll see. But you're absolutely right. We've got to watch. We've got always got to watch that Middle East. Uh, um, it's it's very important. So thank you so much for calling. Thank you. Thank you. That was Lou in Nashua. Now, folks, um, now I see you sit down in the, in the den is saying WTI. Yeah, there's Brent. The different oils. I'm just looking at. The crude oil contract, uh, crude oil March contract, and that's all I'm doing this based on uh, the information that I have. You, you listen to Larry Pesavento, especially his Thursday program. Where he does more on the commodities, and he gets into it a great deal more. But I'm just like, for instance, there could be backwardation. There could be all sorts of things. I'm just looking at the chart. Now, let me just quickly go through a couple of things. Let me look down at my notes. Uh, yes. There are a bunch of stocks that I'm looking at that I really would like to own in my in my newsletter. So I'll be discussing those a week from Wednesday, if we haven't got them by then, I don't think we will. But a week from Wednesday, I'm giving a master traders, I'm giving a, a webinar, I'm sorry, a live webinar between 6.30 and 7.30. This is for subscribers to my opening call. And it's going to go through the kind of analysis that will be specific to the stocks we have, to the stocks I want to get, why I want to get them, to short positions, to the market, and how I'm using my the CD, introducing the Chapman Wave methodology, in relation to the signals, and how you can learn to use it for yourself. So um, that's, that's number one. Number two is, hey, please stay tuned. You've got a fantastic show coming up, and that's with Victor Jones, Options Hour, a really special. There's very few places anywhere you can get this kind of information for free right here at, at TFNN. And then Daryl, Dave, Ken, and Tom come on. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day. Are you looking?